You are not going to continue a conversation with someone who you're buying from that you don't trust. It's just going to stop. You can absolutely use stories to get your message across better. So what story does, it's the way the brain works. It, mm. um, stories tap into emotion. And when I'm saying emotion, I'm not talking about emotional, but they tap into the emotional, the emotion part of our brain. And and that is means people understand it better and actually remember it. So they've remembered the story and your message. But again, when you're talking about, you know, if we're sharing stories and, you know, we mentioned the word vulnerable and stuff, it doesn't all have to be about showing vulnerability, but it's a way to engage our employees. So again, again, we talk about employee engagement. If, if you had a choice between an engaged employee and a disengaged employee, you're going to take engaged all the time. So mm. storytelling is a way to help engage your employees in, in you know, what you're doing, um, your vision, your purpose, your culture, your values, you know, the way we work around here. And again, storytelling is a way to connect with customers. So, you know, how do, how do we tell a story that they remember? And then when they come to that purchasing decision, they've sort of, there's a bit of a bond with who you are. So a story can actually completely change the way you think of a brand or a product or a company. So, you know, regardless how small you are, um, whether you're, you know, one, one person band or a multinational, it's thinking mm. about what messages do I need to communicate? Um, what are the stories I can share? I might be biased, but clearly it's about educating the people that need to do it. Because if mm. there's, you know, if we, I, I see train wrecks when I see companies go, oh, we're going to start telling stories and we're going to get our people to start sharing stories and they don't give them training. And it just, it's, it's a disaster because yeah. it just doesn't, it doesn't have the, it doesn't work and it, it can scar people for life because it's a really negative experience and actually knowing what a story is, the, the amount of, um, have you noticed on websites, the about us page has changed to our story. Have you noticed yeah. that sort of trend that goes on? I, I can't help myself. Nine times I go in and look and nine times out of 10, it's not a story. Mm. It's, so calling something a story doesn't make it a story. A, a timeline of your company does not make it a story. I, you know, there's so many small businesses that have brilliant stories of why they founded the company that they don't mm. share. For some reason, they don't share. Or they think they've got to be all professional and it just ends up being paragraphs of jargon that yeah. doesn't connect or engage with anyone. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really, really great insight. And I guess, you know, you've only got to look at the box offices and the, the, the guidelines they run to create movies and so forth. There's a specific journey that they take you through emotionally to get you to engage in that movie and watch it to the end. Um, and if we can start to cap you know, capsulate that and, and move that into our sales process, move that into our marketing message, move that into our team communication, as you said, you've got a much more engaged audience all round. It, most organisations are delivering messages to their customers. So how can you start to use stories for that um, mm. and delivery messages to their employees. So the, the first thing you've got to be clear on is what, what are the messages you're trying to communicate? When I work with some organ, well, when I work with organizations, I, 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 I teach them how to do it, but it's normally around a purpose. So, you know, are they, is this for sales pitches or is this to communicate their values? And the first place we start with was what are the messages? And I am, I'm amazed where some people will go, I go, well, what's your message? And, and they're, they're still talking 10 minutes later and they can't articulate the message. Mm -hmm. Or they go, yep, I know, what, I know what I want the story to do. I want them to communicate this, 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 and this. So it was like, well, that's five messages. So you need five stories. So being really clear on the message. And then it's finding the stories. Now, this is, this is a combination of your own personal stories you can use. And when I say personal stories, they, they're like nothing to do with work. Um, finding them, but also then finding stories throughout your company, you know, perhaps of employees doing some great stuff, um, employees living the values or employees doing some really good community work or how you've helped customers. So I sort of think of it, if, you know, if you think of it as a storytelling spreadsheet, you got, you got all your messages and then across the line, you've got potentially all the stories you can use. So your own stories and stories of others. And so just just doing that, just being aware of, well, what are the messages? But the very next question you ask yourself is what story could I share to get that message across better? Yeah, I, I love that. It reminds me of, um, uh, not sure if you've ever heard of Eugene Swartz. He was one of the best marketers of all time. And he developed a thing called the uh, five levels of awareness. 
and just start off with bit like the, the and it's related to customers and customers buying patterns and you can start off with most like unaware then you have uh so they're completely unaware of you and unaware of your product and services then you have problem aware they're aware that they have a problem but they're not aware there's any solution that exists for that problem solution aware they know they have a problem and that they know there's some form of solution out there yet then you have uh product aware they're aware of a product to fix the problem that they have and then you have most aware and most aware is basically someone who's jumping on google and saying hey where do i find an iphone 10 blah 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 and they know everything about the product and features they know the cost they're just competing on price yep. stories have the ability to educate your market from a very early stage of inception before they even realize that they have a problem or that they have a need or a solution exists and take them all the way through the buying cycle which earns credibility it mm. earns trust and it earns their credit cards at the end of the day yeah. because you've chosen to educate them more than your competitors who's going out there running advertising or marketing which is like you said a, a timeline of the business or you know a list of features and benefits rather than actually taking the time to communicate in a way that, that they can receive why this product or service is important to them or why this message is important to them yeah yeah i agree and i and i think storytelling is one of the most respectful ways to communicate i think first of all you do have to put a lot of effort into it the, the reason we communicate with facts and figures and um products uh you know product benefits and specifications because it's easy it's, it's mm -hmm. easy but it's um it's not really engaging and it's not talking to their real needs so i mean you know you don't need a story for everything but sometimes when you want to get cut through when you want to build like you said really powerful way to build trust and respect and credibility which is you know in the sales cycle initially that's that's what's going to continue the conversation you are not going to continue a conversation with someone who you're buying from that you don't trust it's just going to stop straight away it's just it's like when you get a linkedin you know when i get a linkedin request and the very next thing is they're trying to sell me something mm. i just i just block them because it was like hang on well you know do we want to go out for dinner first? It was just like going straight bang into it. And it's just, it's actually disrespectful and just not an effective way to sell.